Hello and welcome again. The next operator within our general list is the time operator and this operator is very very useful. As an input we don't have any because this time operator will read its input value from the actual timeline so we don't need any inputs. But we do have a bunch of outputs that we can read out from this time operator. Let's just add them one by one just to talk about them briefly. So let's add the real after the time because they both the same thing approximately. And then let's add the start at the end, the loop start, the loop end, the delta, the previous, and then let's add the frame and frame per second. Let's add a result node. All right. And then let's add this time to that result node. Let's go to calculate animation refresh. And then let's go and hit play on the timeline. So we do have this increasing value over time. And when we get to the end of the timeline, we're going to get this value 8.333, which is the actual time of the timeline in seconds. So we do have 250 frames and that equals 8.3 seconds. Let's uh, make a copy of this result node by hitting control on our keyboard and click and drag and uh, let's connect this reel and it's this reel is going to give us the exact same value as the time because they're both the same thing. The only difference between the time and reel I think the time is going to be more precise so uh, let's just keep that in mind and we do have the start which will give us the start of the timeline which will be zero and let's make another copy and let's hit the end it's going to give us the end value of the timeline in seconds of course let's add uh, another result node by control and click and drag and let's add the loop start it's going to be zero but if we just use these sliders to make the uh, beginning of the timeline changes so we do have this 120 and uh, we do have four seconds so it's going to be output this uh, loop start in seconds let's make another copy it's the exact same thing for the loop end and uh, we do have the delta and this delta will output this value which correspond to the actual time between two frames within our timeline which equals you know 0 0.033 for now but if we just go to the project settings and change the frame rate or the frame per second from 30 to 25 we're going to have another value in here because the frame rate has changed so let's get it back to 30 and we do have another thing that we can read out that is the previous and this previous will read out the value of the previous frame. So when we add that, we can have the exact same values as the time and the real. But if we just go back one keyframe and then just go forward, we can have 8.1 and we do have another value in here. And uh, we do have this 8.1. So let's go forward one frame. So the 8.1 is going to be in this previous output and uh, we do have a new value in the result of the time and real. So we do have this frame output and uh, it's going to read out the frame that we are on. So when we change it, the number will change accordingly. We do have this frames per second, which will output the actual frame rate which is 30 for now but you can change it anytime you want so in a nutshell these are the outputs of the time operator just to see an actual example of this time operator and what it can do let's add an object real quick let's say this tube and let's just bring it into Expresso so let's go to the uh, coordinates and let's just grab this P rotation and let's connect it to the time and let's just hit play 
So we can have this tube rotating over time uh, due to the time changing value in the time operator. Of course, we can make this speed up using a math function, but we will do that in a later tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.